We have a special guest here tonight, um, and um, it's kind of a hallmark of the Democratic Party that we have a, a big tent. We have a lot of diverse ideas here. We welcome uh, people to come and to speak and to share their feelings. And every now and then, we let somebody be a main speaker in a Democratic event who's not actually a Democrat. <laughs> and our main speaker tonight is uh, officially registered as an independent, um, although he does caucus with the Democrats, thank God. Um, uh, he is one of the clearest, most intelligent, most vigorous, most articulate progressive voices in the Democratic Party. So let's please welcome tonight United States Senator Bernie Sanders from the great state of Vermont. Thank you very, very much for inviting me to be with you tonight. This is an extraordinary turnout. And I think the folks who got the awards and all of you are doing something which is enormously patriotic. You are expressing your belief in our democratic system. You are prepared to get involved in the political process. You are prepared to talk about the major issues facing our country. And I just thank you very much for your patriotism in doing all of that. I want to begin by saying this. If you talk to the media and you talk to a lot of folks out there, they talk about the gridlock in Washington and the personality defects of all the members of the Congress and what's going on, why can't anything be done? So I want to tell you as clearly as I can what I see the major problems facing our country to be and what I think we need to, to do to solve them. And the very first issue that comes to my mind when I see problems in America is the real fear that the foundations of American democracy that men and women have fought for throughout the history of this country is currently being undermined by this disastrous Citizens United yeah. Supreme Court decision. Yeah. Now, in Iowa, you have an extraordinary event called the caucus system. And tens of thousands of people, Democrats, Republicans, they come out and they argue about issues, and they show up and they vote for the candidate of their choice. In my state of Vermont, we don't do it that way, but we have, actually in a couple of weeks, we have what we call town meetings, where in small towns, larger towns, people come up, and there are town meetings and people argue about how much they're going to spend for the schools, for the roads, who they're going to elect. It's called grassroots democracy in both cases. And what Citizens United is doing is undermining all of that. And it gave a green light by a five to four vote to the billionaires and to the large corporations to say that you can spend as much as you want. You can buy elections that it's not enough that you own most of the economy, you can now own the United States government with unlimited spending. And that is an absolute disaster for America and for our political process. We have got to overturn through a constitutional amendment, Citizens United, we need public funding of elections. Now, we have heard a lot, and I suspect that every person in this room has heard of the Koch brothers, has heard of the hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. This family, the second wealthiest family in America, who themselves are worth about $100 billion. Wow. You've heard how much they spent, but I, what you have not heard, because the media really has not talked about, is who are these guys? A month or so ago, they announced that they intend to spend some $900 million in the coming election cycle. That's what they said. My guess is they will end up spending a lot more. But to put that into context, what you should know 
is Barack Obama and Mitt Romney in the last election spent a little over a billion dollars, and you're looking at one family that is prepared to spend almost as much as either the Democratic or Republican candidate. Read the Washington Post a few months ago, they now talk about the Koch brothers having a political data file of tens of millions of names, which now exceeds what the Republican Party has. So what you have to ask yourselves, and all Americans have to deal with, is this country, tragically, moving toward an oligarchic form of society where a handful of billionaires control not only the economy, but the political life of this country? And unless we deal with money in politics, unless we create a scenario where young people want to run for office, regardless of their political views, they're excited about getting involved in the process, not having to hustle money from billionaires. Unless we turn that around, I worry about the political and democratic future of America. So top issue for me, no matter what your other issues may be, education, healthcare, the economy, Unless we address money in politics, this country will remain in very difficult straits. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the Koch brothers. Now, my own view is, and I think most of your people would agree, bad idea for any billionaire, regardless of his or her political views. You know, some people say, well, you know, there are progressive billionaires, and what's the difference? I don't want any billionaires to be buying elections, regardless of the views. But I want to talk a little bit about the Koch brothers, because many of you don't know exactly what these guys actually stand for. Who are they? People who in a few years may be the most powerful political force in America, stronger than the Democratic Party, stronger than the Republican Party. This is what we know. We know that in 1980, David Koch, one of the brothers, ran for Vice President of the United States on the Libertarian Party. And the Libertarian Party, of which he funded, had a set of principles, planks in their platform. To the best of my knowledge, their views have not changed, and I want you to understand what we are up against. Because the views in that platform have increasingly become the views of the Republican Party. I want to read you just a few of them to know what the struggle is that we are involved in. First issue, quote, we urge the repeal of federal campaign finance laws and the immediate abolition of the despotic Federal Election Commission, end of quote. You know what that means in English? And where the leadership of the Republican Party is today, they think that Citizens United did not go far enough. They want to abolish all campaign finance law so that the Koch brothers could sit in front of an audience like this and say to you, you want to run for governor of California? Here's a check for $500 million. There's your speechwriter. There's your campaign manager. You work for me. They can directly fund candidates rather than doing independent expenditures. Think about that. Candidates on the direct payroll of the second wealthiest family in America. Other blank quotes. We favor the abolition of Medicare and Medicaid programs, not cuts, the elimination of those programs. Have they succeeded so far? No. But look where the Republicans are. Look at the Ryan budget last year, ends Medicare as we know it, moves it to a voucher program. It says to the elderly in this country, here is a check for $7,000, $8,000, and yes, I'm sorry that you're poor, I am sorry that you have cancer, and here's your check for $7,000, go out and get private health insurance. You think for a moment how long private insurance on $7,000 will last in the hospital. Two days, maybe less. That is the Republican plan for Medicare. Medicaid, if you're poor and you need health care, drastic cuts in that program. Quote, we favor the repeal of the fraudulent, virtually bankrupt, and increasingly oppressive social security system. Have they succeeded in doing that? No. Have they given up that vision that George W. Bush brought forth? No. 
Right now, when I go back to Washington tomorrow, we're going to have to deal with the fact that the Republicans want to make significant cuts in Social Security. And when you see somebody on television talk about, well, we need entitlement reform in America, understand exactly what they are talking about. They are talking about cutting Social Security and Medicare. That's what they need. And in my view, given the fact that poverty among seniors is rising, given the fact that for millions of seniors, Social Security is all or almost all of their income, given the fact that in Iowa and Vermont and throughout America, seniors are making the choice about whether they get the medicine they need, whether they heat their homes, whether they get the food they need, not only should we not be talking about cutting Social Security, we should be talking about expanding Social Security. But how do you do that? Well, I'll tell you how you do that. Right now, the cap on taxable Social Security is $118,000. you got a multimillionaire paying the same amount of money into the system as somebody making $118,000 lift the cap, start at $250,000, we can extend Social Security for decades and expand Social Security as well, and that is, in my view, exactly what we should be doing. Now, the Koch brothers also, this is the last point that I'll make about them. They say they want um, to... Um, we oppose, listen to this, listen to this, and understand what's going on in the Republican Party. These are the major supporters of the Republican Party today, quote, we oppose all government welfare, relief projects, and aid to the poor programs. All these government programs are privacy invading, paternalistic, demeaning, and inefficient. The proper source of help for such persons is the voluntary efforts of private groups and individuals. What does that mean in English? What it means is goodbye food stamps, goodbye Pell Grants, goodbye Head Start, goodbye aid for child care, goodbye the Environmental Protection Agency, goodbye every single program passed in this country since Franklin Delano Roosevelt was president, which was designed to help the elderly, the children, the sick, and the poor. That is their agenda, and I am not exaggerating. Now, I'm not going to tell you that every Republican subscribes to all of these tenets. That is not true. But these are the people who are funding the Republican Party. These are the people who are close to being a more powerful political entity than either of the two major parties. This is what we are fighting against. I've got four kids. I've got seven grandchildren. And you and I and our kids cannot afford to lose this struggle. No. No. Now, I want to say a few words above and beyond my concerns about a democracy which is in trouble. A democracy which in the last election 63% of the American people didn't vote. 80% of young people didn't vote. And if anyone here in this room thinks we are going to deal with the problems facing the working class or the middle income people in this country, when tens of millions of people don't participate in the political process, you are kidding yourself. And that's why I really want to applaud all of you who are so heavily involved in the political process. Because at the end of the day, the way we win is by increasing voter turnout, by raising public consciousness, by making sure that people are not voting against their own best interests, and that is what you do every single day. So thank you.